Well, unlike most other performers, uh, she's just not limited to certain abilities. She is a singer, dancer, an actress, a model, and an athlete. She's a quadruple threat. Kinda the most prettiest, most smartest, most intelligentest, most most girl I've ever seen. She is the star of all stars. It's the most beautiful nose I've ever seen. An idol of our generation. This little woman with the big voice redefined what it means to be a superstar. Candy Alabama. Behind the music. Born Candace Alley Bammer on August 28, 1970. In a little backwoods town, her rise to fame would not be immediately achieved. At the age of 20, Candy married her first cousin, Bo Cephas Bammer, which delayed her career for the next 18 years. I would say her first big break came with the grand opening of Mr. Johnson's Bible and Tire Mall. It was at that event that she met her agent and guidance counselor, uh, Johnny Cash. It's K-A dollar sign H. It's, it's Johnny Cash and Johnny Cash. There's a difference. It's subtle, but there's a difference. I was driving through Birmingham one day just minding my own, uh, catch a flat tire, but lucky for me, right down the street, there's a Bible and Tire Mall grand opening. So I go, and there's this angel. It, that's not even a good enough word for her. She's just belching it out on stage. And I called up the band instantly, I was like, I'm done change my career to management. You know, the first time, first time I heard Candace sing, she said, my God, if that ain't the prettiest voice I ever done heard. I swear to God, she's got the, she's got the best voice. Angel's down her. Yeah, angel's coming down from heaven and blowing their beautiful horns in my ear. I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah, she ain't gonna be famous one day. Right, Sean? Don't get me wrong. I love my mother. It's just, I'm not the biggest fan of her work. I just don't get it. Candy's been a role model for many a young group. I think she's a guiding light for such fledgling bands as uh, Room in My Shorts and Nose Diggers. We're on our way to the United States for a new tour. We get off the plane. First American girl I see. Hello, love. That's what she said. She said, hello, love. And I said, you, you don't look British. But that was good. When we met, Candy said that her dream was to go to Nashville, and I personally promised her that I would get her to Nashville. About three months later or so, she was the headlining act on the Cumberland Steamboat Experience. Oh. Uh. Out of all of her hit songs, Sweet Nothing is probably my favorite. Uh, of course, it was one of her bigger records. Then again, all of them are the same size. <laughs> uh-huh, honey. All right. Sweet Nothings would be the first to reach the top of the charts. Three times overall, our albums went double aluminum. Double aluminum. Her music would go on to inspire a whole generation. Well, I might say Candy's inspired us. Lords. Thrust into the spotlight at the age of 38. Candy took the world by storm. I don't even know how you classify some of her songs as music. I think uh, Bo
Bo Cephas was the critical factor in in moving her career along. Yes, she had the agents. Yes, she had uh, other influences. But uh, Bo Cephas's daily encouragement, up until the time she was 38, uh, he would always tell her, "You can do it, girl." And that just kept her. Finally, after I guess 18 years of hearing it, she said, "I will do it." I, I love everything about Candy, and I think she's done mostly right, except when it came to naming her children. You see, my daddy's name was Arthur. I was Barry. I named my daughter Candy, A, B, C. Next in line should have been a D. She goes ahead and named her son Banjo. And she had to fuck it all up. My grandfather wanted to name me Dingus. When my mom told me that, it was the first time I was ever grateful that my name was Banjo. The relationship between Candy and her son Banjo uh, is uh, an interesting one in that uh, she has achieved such great success and um, he has at best underwhelmed. I don't like that boy Banjo. Wouldn't be in the band. I tried to sign him, but he's not what we're looking for here. After great success in her music career, Candy would go on to pursue other goals. Candy wanted to be a movie star. I think her most memorable role was in No Country for Old Women, which broke barriers for grandmothers in movies, but this of course went straight to DVD. Ever since my first movie, I've always just found that Candy just, she's always known what role that I've given her. She just, she knows how to play every character. She's a firecracker on every level. She got wooers? Oh yeah, she was in that, uh, that there, uh, Titanic. I saw her in that. Uh, what, she was in Goodwill Hunting. I go down to the drive here to fix her. And I'll see you. I've been forced to sit through a few of my mother's films. Luckily, I don't have to pay for them. Some of Candy's movies that I have personally produced. The Hillbilly Sandwich, for one. Another one is The Mississippi Mud House Massacre. Now, her up-and-coming movie, which I would advise everyone to see, is going to be The Creole Nocturne. Go to vote just every one got down her shows. Yep, every single one. So the little sign that candy. says candy is dandy. Got season passes, but there's such a thing. Candy would soon break barriers in the modeling world. With a look so iconic, she was bound to turn heads. But what is it that makes her so unique? It's that nose of hers. It's just the way that her voice is just so magnificent. It's just straight from her nostrils. It's beauty to my ears. She has a distinct look that even amongst her fans in Taobai, they have decided to have their nose altered via plastic surgery. I didn't know I'm fooling them along. You get what we're doing right here, over at the Jensen Tour, and that's how I take this down there. Call the goddamn place. And the place is going to be down here. If I take a flat. If I come to the grass and still have a fooling all the time, I'm going to go to the dog and stalk it. I wasn't born with the, uh, family nose. I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse. After a Sports Illustrated photo shoot, Candy set her sights conquering the world of athletics. When she wanted to make the switch from singing and dancing into athletics, first instinct, Super Special Olympics. That's where she belongs. She's super and she's special. Well, I think uh, most dancers are athletes innately. And uh, so it wasn't a big jump for her to go to the SSO and perform as admirably as she did. It was total raw talent, just watching Candy pick up gymnastics. Um, 
Most of the time at the age of 40 when someone starts, it's totally too late, but not her. It seemed like she's been doing it her entire life. I'm very, very proud of her. The world had never seen such elite athleticism. Oh, she's been having her athletic ability uh, ever since she was young. I mean, when she came out, the cord was wrapped around her neck and her leg. She came out in a, a full split. I mean, I was a born athlete. Um, it uses total body conditioning. You condition every single body part. It's mostly for young kids, but with Candy, she put all that myth into the toilet. It's awesome. Candy would go on to win three SSO gold medals. She is an icon of our generation, a hero of mine, and, and is an all-around good person. This is about wrap it up because we gotta go on in about a freckle past a half. You know why Candy's so popular? Cause she's sweet, and everybody loves Candy. We're looking at a talent that comes around only once in a generation maybe once in a millennium. Sort of like Haley's Comet. Or could you call it Candy's Comet? Oh, Candy! You're so goddamn dandy. Oh, Candy. Yeah, that's next sort. Oh, yeah, Candy. And I just want to tell you that I love you. Candy. That's it! Yeah! Yum!